Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Tuesday, August the 22nd, race number 11 at Parks, four stakes races on tap. This race of the day is the local prep for the grade one, $1 million Pennsylvania Derby. Let's toss up the field for the Smarty Jones. Three-year-olds going a mile and a 16th. It's a grade three worth $300,000. Please click or scan the QR code for race of the day access on mobile. Wide open morning line. Mike, the two salute the stars. Took a lot of money in the Haskell. He's the three to one morning line favorite on the Smarty Jones for Brad Cox. He's run a couple of really nice races too. The Haskell, I guess, ultimately just a little too tough for this horse. He didn't run that well in that spot. His prior two efforts, though, were, were really good. His first two dirt starts were both wins, and he got some figures for those. I guess he could be the favorite in here, Dan. He's hardly a standout. It'll be interesting to see how this pace plays out. Our friends at Timeform US think it could get hot. Note the red bar designation. That's a fast pace. Army Times, the number three, went gate to wire, but on a slower pace in his most recent start for Chad Brown. He's going to step up in class. 90% Matty, one of the local hopefuls, is quick. Victory Way stretches out for the first time. And Il Morocco showed some early life. Is the pace going to be red hot? I think it'll be fair. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to be necessarily fast, but may, they won't be walking either. Army times, I, I think they're going to go forward with this horse again. Not that I think he necessarily has to be on the lead, though, to be effective. He's very lightly raced. Um, I, don't, I don't think they will be on a dead scent here, Dan, but if nobody else is going, he'll go. If the pace is hot, keep an eye on the number one, Caliostro. You'll notice the LP flag over his chiclet. That indicates he has the fastest late pace rating on time form US. And speaking of Caliostro, let's watch his third place finish in the Indiana Derby in July. He's going to try to split horses right here, and he is going to be stopped. The hole just does not uh, materialize. He tries to get outside. He isn't quick enough to get to this hole. He's going to drop inside and he's going to run on well to only get beat less than two lengths, Mike. You wonder if he got through, maybe he would have been closer to the big favorite verifying. It's certainly possible. I um, mean, he, he had plenty of trouble there through the stretch run. I think we should point out that we only showed you the stretch run, though. Up until that point, this horse got a perfect trip. He was right in behind the leaders. He was chasing around the second turn. He just couldn't get that split when he wanted to get it. Um, still ran really well there. I liked his race two starts back to one turn mile um, at Churchill too, Dan. That was a pretty good performance from this horse. The pace was there for him. He made a big run into it. Scotland made a big run into it. Scotland was a little bit better, but this horse ran well. And the horse, uh, the horses coming out of that race at Horseshoe Indianapolis have done okay. The fourth place finisher came back, ran second in the Ellis Park Derby, put up a 93 buyer speed figure. The two is Salute the Stars. This horse won the Pegasus at Monmouth two starts back. That's the local prep race for the Haskell. He was nine to two in the Haskell. The same price as Tappet Trice, basically the same price as Kentucky Derby winner Mage. And he was up to his old tricks, Mike. He pulls very hard in the early part of the race, and that might leave him a little tired in the stretch. It's a, it's a big problem for this horse so far. He's done it in all three of his of his dirt starts, Dan. He's just very, very hard to settle in the early part of his races. I think it's fair to give him a pass for the Haskell anyway. That was you know just way too tough a field for this horse. His prior two starts were good. I personally felt like he took advantage of a, of a really fast and contested pace two starts back, but he might get a good setup in this race as well. The trainer, Chad Brown, had good success with the dam of the number three, Army Times. That's paid up subscriber, and Army Times is now two for two around two turns, including this gate to wire win and a first level allowance at Monmouth last time out. And Army Times just got right to the front under Joel Rosario, had a nice easy half mile, and was just too much for this overmatched group. Uh, Army Times looked good doing it, however, Mike, and has a lot of upside potential. Very well bred. Yeah, very well, but this is a good performance. It's not a great field, but the horses that are starting to stagger here behind Army Times, those are the horses that really came and tried to put pressure on this horse up the backstretch around the final turn. He just turned those horses away. He kept going. They were dead tired through the stretch. Um, I thought it was a really, really good performance for this horse. He's very lightly raced. He has a really nice pedigree. He could be on the lead in this race, Dan. I don't know. I think there's a chance that he runs really, really well in this spot.
Horse for Course is up next. That's the 490% Maddie, who is based at Parks for Trainer Butch Reed. He already has won four times here. This horse was very game at Laurel Park three starts back. They tried to stretch him out a mile and an eighth in the Federico Tessio, and he got caught up in a hot pace battle. He worked hard every step and ended up just blowing it in the last hundred yards or so. The Long Branch two starts back. He ran okay. And Butch Reed told me earlier this week, maybe you want to take the crowd pleaser with a grain of salt. He came out of that race with a foot bruise. Yeah, you feel like he had to have some kind of an excuse uh, for that performance. And it didn't necessarily feel like you could give him the wet track necessarily because he had run so well on a wet track uh, previously. But maybe there is some kind of excuse that he's just got to rebound off of that. His prior three efforts were all pretty good performances. I don't know if they're good enough to beat uh, this field, but they put him uh, in the mix in the stretch, I think. And number five, Victory Way, down from New York for trainer Bill Mott. Super impressive, taking a first-level allowance, going a one-turn mile in his most recent start. And he just sat a very comfortable spot off of the early lead, and it was time to go. You see this sizable son of City of Light take over the lead and grind it out. He's going to try two turns for the first time. I don't think it's going to be an issue for him. When I talked to Bill Mott earlier, uh, last late last week, he seemed pretty excited about this horse stretching out. Yeah, I mean, he's bred to stretch out. I don't think you should be worried about it at this point. He's certainly a good-looking horse, too. Um, we'll see if he can back up the 97 buyer he just earned in that race we watched, Dan. Obviously, if he runs that fast, he's a major player in here. I can't say that I'm you know, necessarily thrilled with that performance. Um, it looked, To me, it kind of looks better on paper than it did when we watched the replay there, but um, I, I won't knock this horse. He's very lightly raced with some pedigree. And number six is Mo Visitor, who upset odds on favorite 90% Maddie in a muddy off turf edition of the crowd pleaser at Parks. And then the previous owners decided to cash their chips in. They put him through the auction ring. This was sold for 120000 and he looked good right away. For Mario Montoya, this is a good effort for Mo Visitor, who went to the lead, just opened up on the backstretch, and really was never threatened uh, at three to one. A good performance. And this horse looks like he's, he's figuring the game out. Yeah, maybe a nice purchase, those for these new connections, Dan. This horse had never run on dirt before he got rained off. And that crowd pleaser, he looked good winning that race. He looked even better winning this race over fast dirt. Now he gets the class test. Daydreaming Boy goes out for trainer Lou Linder, who told me that getting him out to two turns was the key. He's won his last two starts. He just seems like a different horse than the one we saw sprinting earlier this year. Here's his most recent effort, allowance win going a two-turn mile at Parks. Short field, only four horses, and Daydreaming Boy was able to sit right off of an easy pace. He's just too good for this group. Got a great trip in this race, but he also wins it really easily. And he does finish this race off, Dad. I mean, he's still going through the wire uh, in this race. So, you know, Lou Linder is probably right. This horse was waiting to stretch out. And once they got him around two turns, he upped his game in a big way. I think he's got to up it again against this field. But he's looked good in his last two starts. Congratulations out to John Service, who won the uh, career victory number 2000 at Parks on Monday. He'll send out the eight Adero, who's won four of his last five starts. This horse might be a little bit underrated. Here's his most recent race, second level allowance at Monmouth going a two-turn mile. And Adero sat just off the pace at a big price, made a wide run, and kept on going. He's going to need to improve again as he steps way up into the graded stakes ranks. you got to like the way he finished this off. Yeah, another horse stepping up in class here to see what they got. He walloped this field. I really liked his performance. He, to me, he's interesting, Dan, because service started this horse out around two turns. Like he wanted to go long with them. They wound up sprinting him a couple of times. He broke his maiden going short. But since they've stretched him back out in distance, all of his races are good. He was super impressive last time. I think he's interested in here at a price. The nine-year-old Morocco has faced some of the crop's best in some very, very tough spots. They ran him in the curl in a restricted stakes last time out at Saratoga. He ran quite well. Let's watch that effort. The winner of the race, Scotland, might be a very nice three-year-old in the second half of this season. Il Morocco stayed up close to Scotland, just couldn't get to him, but he did finish ahead of grade one winner Blazing Sevens, certainly an improved performance off of his previous stakes races, and they decided to run here instead of the Travers. It's probably a good, wise move. It probably is a wise move. We'll see if he can back this performance up. This is one of those races I think you at least want to be aware. You can see that there's just nothing happening behind these one-two finishers. Scotland went to the lead. Il Morocco followed him. They went one-two around the track, and nobody else did anything. This horse did run well in that race, Dan. We'll see if he can do it again.
Before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. It's Travers Week here on DRF TV. Top pick time for our Tuesday race of the day. We both like Cagliostro. I just love the work that Cherie DeVoe has done uh, overall and gave this horse a break after the Louisiana Derby to grow up a little bit. And I think it's really benefited this horse. He had a little bit of trouble last time out. He's able to save ground in this race behind what should be an honest pace. I'm looking forward for a good performance. Yeah, I don't have anything to add to that. I looked at him the exact same way. I have him on top in this race, hoping that he's going to be some kind of fair price in here. Um, I'm interested in getting that Ada Darrow in there somewhere too, though, Dan. I think he's going to be a good price in this race. I like his recent races. I also want to use the five victory way. Just looks like he has the physical as well as the pedigree to get better as the distances get longer. Might, might have something for the Pennsylvania Derby if this horse runs well. And the winner of this race likely to move on to the PA Derby as well. One, three, eight, two for Mike. One, five, nine, six for me. It's Tuesday's race of the day. It's the Smarty Jones. Good luck.